In our ChatGPT video, we had created this ChatGPT-like UI using REST API and JavaScript fetch requests. We will be building more of these type of web applications using GPT-3 API, so I want to go over the code with you. These files will be available for download for my Patreon supporters, but we will go over it in this video if you like to copy it directly from the video. I'll put a link to my Patreon in the description. This is our HTML file. It displays a text area. The additional code is so that the text area expands when you type more than the available lines that is visible. And a submit button. We're linking to the style.css and script.js file. We're going to be talking about those as well. Here's a demonstration of how the text area expands as you type in more text. This is our CSS file, which gives our HTML its styling. Most of this was written with GPT-3 API directly in VS Code. I will link to the video in the description in which we have created this web app. Connecting and getting responses from GPT-3 API starts at the script.js. It has many lines of code, but really the crux of the issue starts at the submit button at event listener. When we click on the button, it calls an async callback function, which makes a fetch request to the given address URL with a post and then receives the data back. This communicates with the main.py file using REST API, and then our main.py Python file connects to the OpenAI API and retrieves a response based on the input that is being sent by the JavaScript file. Let me actually delete all the code that actually does our user interface so we can talk about it more clearly. The most important lines of code is these ones right here. This just gets the text area and the button, and when the button receives a click event, it creates, it calls an async callback function and takes the value which the user had inputted into the area and makes a fetch request to the URL in the backend and sends whatever the user has inputted back to the backend and then just waits for the response. In the meanwhile, our main.py file receives the input through the fetch request and then sends it to the OpenAI API as a prompt and then gets the response and then returns the response back to the script and then JavaScript. And when the script.js receives this, the front end receives this, is in this case, it just console logs it, so prints it. But on the other hand, the other lines of JavaScript code was actually displaying it on our web app. To run a fast API backend server, you need to have fast API and Uvicorn pip installed. Once you written your code, you can come to Visual Studio Terminal's arrow right here and start a command prompt. And then type in this command, uvicorn main, which is your main.py file, equals app, which is the app that you have defined in line 7 in your code, dash dash reload. Once you click enter, your server will start, and the reload allows you, whenever you change your file and save it, to reload the server. I also have live server extension installed on Visual Studio Code. Once you have that, and once you have your index.html file and all your other files ready, you can just click go live here, and it will start your server and shows up in the browser. Let's talk about some important key points. Your OpenAI API key. I have assigned my API key to an environment, user environment variable, and I'm retrieving it using this line. You also have to implement the course middleware to get around the browser's security features, even when running on local. So this actually assigns the ports to the origins and then allows those origins through course middleware. Otherwise, your browser's console will throw some errors. And then we are just using fast API to actually, within the fast API function, we are actually getting the response from OpenAI GPT-3 text DaVinci 003 and returning with the response back to the front end. You should be able to copy this code verbatim and be able to get a response from GPT-3 API as long as your origins, your URL, and the port numbers are correct. As far as the script.js file, these are the most important lines. As long as your URL is right, you can actually copy this verbatim as well. And this was the entirety of our code, which does some of the other stuff. For example, adds the user to input, and then when it gets the response from GPT-3, that's GPT-3. It is some somewhat of a waiting function, waiting loop assigned. It just displays that the system is waiting. But here you can actually copy this as well, or you can download it from my Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I wish you good luck bringing your ideas using GPT-3 API alive. Take care and see you in the next video.